Hello, hello, hello. Daniela Langford here, your creative transformational catalyst, and welcome to another week of Free Create Fridays, your inspiration to show you just how easy it is to incorporate creativity into your life and that no matter your circumstances or your materials at hand, that you can be creative in your life no matter what and it can help to change your perspective on not only life but yourself and that permeates out into everything else. So this week we are going to be finishing up our series on upcycling and recycling our clothes. We're going to be closing that out this week so that next week we can move on to bead wire wrapping to prep bleh, to prepare ourselves for our wand making tutorial which I will be doing live with you all for Free Create Fridays in two weeks. So start gathering up your materials. I will be posting a video on what materials you possibly will need for that. But for this week, again, we're finishing up our recycling clothes series. So this week I'm gonna show you how to take an old pair of jeans that doesn't fit or is ratty or is not a style anymore and take these and turn them into a really cute apron and a bag. And also, if we have time, I'm going to show you how to take cute little socks like this that have holes in them, that you've worn them out to death, but you just love them and they're just absolutely cute, how to take those and turn them into really cute fingerless gloves that really will not take but maybe five to ten minutes max. So you're going to love those. Hopefully we'll get to that this time. If not, I will be sure to make another series because there are just endless amounts of things to do with your old clothes. <laughs> I could go on forever. So. As usual, we are going to be starting off with a little bit of stretchy, stretchy dance time, and then we will be diving right into it. So grab your tea, grab your wine, grab whatever you're drinking, and come on in. We're going to get started. I'm going to throw on some nice music here and we are going to continue our little jaunt into dance stretching. So last week, if you recall, that we started working on our hips and moving them independently side to side. This week we're going to be continuing on along the same vein and working with our chest and getting our chest to start to work independently of everything else. Because again, belly dance is about being able to separate the different portions of your body and get them to move independently of one another. That's really the trick of it. So we are going to be starting again with our chest, but as usual, a nice fall forward with a lean back afterwards. I always like to prime our bodies before creativity with a little stretching and movement. Not anything very strenuous but just enough to get the energy flowing, get the chi flowing, get the circulation going. Open our chest up wide here. We're just putting our arms back as far as you can. Don't make your shoulders pop or make them uncomfortable. That is not the, the goal of this, but we are definitely wanting to open up our, our chest here today. This feels really good just doing this. So you can see my hands are just they're just holding there. I'm not trying to like crank them up or do anything like that right now. We're just trying to stretch your chest out. You want to pull your shoulder blades back and that will help open up the chest area. Nice deep breath. And release, very nice. So again, I'm just gonna roll up hold them across our chest just a little bit back and forth here because again whatever you do in one direction you want to do in the other okay so for chest work also very useful if you have a mirror especially if you're just starting out but all we're going to be doing is I like to hold my hands on my hips so that our hips stay still now you're gonna remember our belly dance posture from last week, and if you don't, that's okay. If it's your first week trying this, come on in, that's okay, it won't be scary, I promise. So all you're gonna do, I don't know if you can see my legs. <laughs> all you're gonna do is bend your knees just gently. Now you'll wanna recall that you don't wanna ever have your legs locked back in a locked position. 
You always want to have them just a little bit bent, not like you're going to totally sit down, but just, just a little bit of shock absorption there. And chest up, neck long, get your little boop, sit down a little bit into it, and that is your basic belly dance posture. And that will help protect all of your muscular and skeletal system as you continue on your journey into this dance form. It's also just very useful for your post posture in general if you can go around walking with this. So what we're gonna do, hands on the hips. You can either hold them in front, just like here, or you can put them on your hips, whatever works best for you. And what you want to do is begin to use these muscles right up underneath your bosoms here. And you're literally going to lift your chest away from your core. And down, and lift. And down, and lift. Now you'll notice I'm not doing this, right? With my shoulder blades, not doing that. That will hurt you. <laughs> That's not good for you. So I'm not doing this, right? Using my arms. You're literally, there are muscles right up underneath here. And it may take some practice to get used to them. But you just want to lift your chest up and drop it down. Lift it up and drop it down. So that's the beginning move. You can also lift your chest up in a V and make it go side to side. But you'll notice that I'm not moving my hips at all. My whole lower body from the core down is perfectly stable. So, so there's a little bit of stretch time that we're going to get started with just to give you little tasters here and there of the kinds of things that I like to do all the time with my clients just to get their body moving. This is a wonderful low impact thing to do as much as you possibly can. So grab all your materials, grab your old jeans, grab your tea and your wine and all the rest of the stuff that you have. And I'm going to show you how to make something super cute out of your old pair of jeans. Let's go. Okay, here is everything that we are going to need. Here are all our supplies. We have got our old pair of jeans here. We have also got our fabric scissors, which you definitely want to use those over craft scissors if you have them. Tape measure, ruler, a marking chalk. You can use a pencil. Um, for this project, you could also probably get away with using a Sharpie, whatever you have on hand some pins if you'd like to use them, and for our edges and our ruffles, either some scrap fabric that you have sitting around. I just so happen to have this pretty awesome marble fabric here. And you could also use some lace if that is what you have or you would like to use. Oh, also, you're going to need a sewing machine. You're definitely gonna need a sewing machine for this one. So gather up all of your stuff and let's get started. Okay, so we've got our pair of jeans here. Normal pair of jeans, nothing too crazy about them. So here you can clearly see where the pockets end. So what you want to do, at least for this design, is you're going to find how far down the pocket goes and match that up with the crotch. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to cut right down the side seam here on both sides and then cut this whole front piece completely free. So you're going to end up with the back with some legs on it. So that's all free. So you're gonna end up with a back with two, two pockets on it. We're gonna be seam ripping these off so you can use your scissors or an actual seam ripper. It's like one of these here. These are the ergonomical versions. Because I sew a lot. <laughs> but they also have the very cheap, very simple version. But what you're looking for is that bad boy right there. That is the important part. So we are just going to seam rip one of these pockets off. Okay, here we go. 
go. Finally pulled that free. Okay, so you pretty much got it all cleaned off here. And if you really like that orange stitching, you could always get orange thread to stitch it back on with so you maintain the look. But we're just gonna put this to the side now and work on one of these legs. So we have our pants here. Just like that. And this is going to be the front of the apron. Now what we're going to do is cut out the leg to match the width of the waistband. And then it's going to come up and be the chest portion. side for the other project or to make straps with for this one so you have your bottom of your jeans here and your waist length there so it's looking like it is actually longer than we need which is fantastic apron. Here is the bottom of your apron. Here is your little pocket. It's going to go on there. Starting to see the cuteness. It's going to be cute. So you can see it coming together here. And now we're going to be moving on to our fabric. Now, if you're going to be using just plain lace that's already made like this, you can just simply take it as it is and you want to fold over the edge for to see. You want to fold over the edge twice and stitch that down with your sewing machine so that you can create a finished edge for your jeans. I'm just going like that. I'm going to take it all the way around. And in this case, I'm going to be using this fabric that I had laying around that I made some pajama pants for Frank Adam. <laughs> and we're going to be cutting about three inches, three inches wide, and about three to four, three to four times as long as it is all the way around here. To help me with this process a little bit faster, I've got my handy dandy schmancy fancy two inch ruler here, and I'm gonna combine it with my one inch to make three. It's just perfectly in there. Look at that. Ugh. I love it. Love it. Okay, so I've cut all of my three inch strips. As you can see, they're not all the same length, but that's okay, because we're just gonna sew them together. But I've got about a total of about 240 inches. Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine. Now, if you would like a tutorial on actual sewing, that is a whole nother thing that we can do. Just post in the comments if that is something that you think that you would be interested in and having actual sewing machine tutorials about how to work them, how to set them up, how to clean them, all kinds of things like that. So what I've done here again is I've just taken two pieces and I'm putting them right side to right side, which if you don't know, with the pretty side generally is the right side and the less pretty side is the wrong side. There are certain fabrics that it is very, very extremely difficult to tell, but that comes later. Luckily for us today, super easy to tell. So all you're gonna do is stitch about a half an inch worth of seam allowance, which means that from where the stitch is to the end of the fabric, that amount there is your seam allowance. So we're just gonna do that here. Okay, so we've got all of these connected. 
And it's okay if like your pattern like this one, see it's a little bit off because what we're gonna end up doing is gathering and or pleating. And so it'll end up getting hidden in there anyway. So again, this is your seam allowance. It's about half an inch. I generally like to do half an inch just for shits and giggles because it gives you a little bit more fabric for these stitches to hold onto. Because for instance, if you were to sew right along that edge there, there's a really, really good chance that with this fabric in particular, with most fabrics, that as you can see that it will start to pull away and will start to unravel. So if you sew really, really close along that line, chances are that it will unravel to your stitches and then it'll take everything apart. So definitely don't wanna do that. So our next step here is going to be taking our fabric and making that nice finished edge. So when you, what you wanna do is you wanna do about a quarter of an inch there and just fold that over two times. You wanna match that seam up there, right there. I don't know if my camera will focus, there we go. So as you can see, the seam is matched up there. So it's not like all wonky or anything like that. And we're gonna do this the whole length of the way. So I'm gonna first show you how to do it the old fashioned way. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and for our purposes today, use my little, whoop, there we go. These are what they call hemming feet. As you can see, if you don't already know, there's like that nice curl up in there. So the fabric gets fed in through here. The mechanism um, curls it in a way. Uh, it's, not, it's not actually mechanical but by virtue of the shape of it, helps curl the fabric under and shoots it through that little chute right there, thereby making your finished edge without having to press it before you do it or do a lot of stop and go. So I love these things. If you do a lot of sewing, they are definitely worth the investment. Here we go. Again, always backstitch the beginning and end of anything you're sewing. And if you say you run out of thread or something and you have to start over again, try and backstitch over where you ran out of thread. You basically just wanna make these as secure as possible. So here you see with the hand rolling, kinda of have to stop and, and roll it up again every little bit here. But if you were to have machine, I mean, uh, sorry, excuse me, iron press this, um, which also takes a lot of time, or if you have any of these feet, they will definitely serve you. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch the feet just so this doesn't take forever and a day, and I will be back with you momentarily. Okay, so here I've got the foot attached. I don't know if you can see that. There it is with the fabric all fed through it. And so you're gonna get to see just how much quicker having this little extra tool doohickey really is. So what you wanna do is find, and usually there's like a panel of stitches or something that shows you where all the stitches are and what they are and all kinds of things like that on a machine. So you wanna find the one that has the longest length on it. That means the longest stitch length. So it, the needle comes down, it skips a whole bunch, and then it comes down again. So that way you can actually use it to gather instead of just stitching. So in this case, I'm gonna take it to my longest one, which is even longer than the five on the regular. And we're gonna get started over here. And I just wanted to show you that. And all machines are different. So it just is a matter of finding which translation works for your machine. So just find the longest stitch. And again, if you have to do it by hand, it really doesn't take that long. All you're gonna do is get your needle and thread needle and thread and you're just going to work your way so you can see that you're just gonna work your way through the fabric all right you want those big stitches like that so that when you pull them together they gather just like that and then once we gather them then we're going to 
Then we're going to sew this whole thing onto our apron. Okie dokie. Now that you've got all of this gathered up into this very small space, we are also, while I was working on that, I also went ahead and cut some spare strips that are two inches wide that we're going to use as bias tape around all the edges of the upper part of the apron to finish that off. So let's go grab our pieces of apron and let's get started assembling. Woo, finally. Okie dokie. Here we are, we've got all of our parts. We've got our front and our upper, our pocket. I also went ahead again and cut these strips out of um, the leftover scraps that I had instead of cutting into the chunk of the fabric. These are approximately an inch and a half and I'm going to be sewing them together again and using these for the next straps. We can go ahead and attach our pocket. So you want to center it here. You also want to make sure that you leave enough room along the bottom to attach your bottom <laughs> and also leave a enough, enough along the edges here to do your bias tape. So that's how this is going to work is we are going to sew that on there like that. It's going to wrap around, come back around and we're going to top stitch it in like that. So you're going to have a nice border like that. The waistband of the pants is going to be here and the ruffle is going to be all the way around this edge. Okie doke. I've gone ahead and got all of my ruffling pinned on here. So I'm gonna go and sew all of this down and I will show you what it looks like when it is done. I'm going to also go ahead and attach the waistband to the top portion. Which you can kind of see now how it's going to come together. It's gonna look like that. And I've already also already gone ahead and made the straps out of the extra pieces. So I just made them nice and long so you can tie them in a bow in the back. And we're just going to stitch them on right up underneath there. Like literally, I'm not even gonna try and hide it. We're just gonna stitch them on right there, back stitch it a few times and she will be good to go. So we are going to do that because this video is getting a little long. <laughs> And I may actually have to save doing the bag for another tutorial later on in a few more weeks because I do want to get to the crystals and I also want to finish this one up and show you at least the sock gloves. So you can kind of see, get an idea of how this is going to finish up. I'm going to finish it up here and show you what it looks like at the end. And then I will get to showing you what the little sock into gloves looks like. It's very simple, very quick. You're going to love it. So now we've got our socks here and I'm going to show you how easy it is to turn your socks into gloves. Now these ones are a little short for this 
but they already have holes in them, as you can see. I don't know if you can see that right there. A little hole in there. So you can do this with ankle socks, and they're gonna come right to the edge of your wrist, or you can do them with regular crew socks, or tube socks, or wherever you like to do. So you can kind of see how this is gonna work. Just by right here. So you can actually use the holes if you've got holes in them, the holes in the ends. So you can try, and you don't wanna cut very much. You really, really don't. Because if you cut too much, it will. So you can do something like that and not use the heel. Oop, looks like I need one for my pinky. Don't want to leave the pinky out. But you can see just how little really I actually cut into those socks. That is probably. That's half an inch at max. So using the hole that I already had, whoop, turn them into fingerless gloves, just like that. That is literally how easy it is to get some fingerless gloves. Now you've got the heel here, and if you don't mind it being there because these are these uh, short little ankle socks, this works perfect for that, being able to go all the way down to the toe. Now, if you have a pair of socks that are longer, you will want to use the heel as your thumb. But that's basically as simple as it is. And fingerless gloves. How easy is that? Don't even have to sew them. All right, here we are at the end, Phoenixes, and we have finished our upcycling projects, our whole series, four weeks of craziness, of reusing all of your clothes to do all kinds of crazy different things. I will mount another series like this later on in the year because there are absolutely a million more things that we could do with our clothes, including the bag that I promised, but I will make a separate DIY for you for that because I don't want this video to go on all dang night. So have a check out of the cute little gloves. I think these are just so adorable with the little feet on there. I love little Halloween things. So there is that and our piece de resistance the apron how cute is this little thing I even put some ties here on the side just do like that and you have a cute super cute little apron with all the pockets that work all the pockets work every single one of them Oh yeah, <laughs> here we are all finished up and it has turned out really, really cute. Look how cute that turned out. Oh, I'm gonna love wearing this, especially in the summer when we start doing some barbecue in, do all kinds of things in the kitchen, lots of baking, it's gonna be fabulous. So, as I said earlier, don't throw all this stuff out save these parts of those jeans that we cut out. Here's the pier right here. Save all this stuff, save these big pieces because you will need them to make the bag. The bag's gonna be super simple and you will absolutely adore it. So I hope you enjoyed this week. I hope you enjoyed that series. I hope you got a lot out of it. I cannot wait to see all of your projects posted up in the group. Post them, post them, post them, because I know you're working on this stuff. I know some of you ladies have been posting and I absolutely love it. So please keep on doing that. I can't wait to see your projects. So as I said earlier in the video, I am going to be starting next week with a tutorial on wire bead wrapping and crystal wrapping things of that nature so that we can get prepared for our live wand making tutorial that we'll be doing in two weeks. So I will be doing little videos, bits and bobs here and there, including next week's free create about different aspects of making the wand and things that you know, materials that you'll need to gather and things of that nature. So make sure to keep an eye look out for that. If you've missed any of these awesome videos, you can find them on YouTube on my Redesign Your Life Forever channel. I will make sure to post the link for that in the group and in this video. 
You can find all of the old free creates. You can find all the old chat rants, all kinds of crazy stuff in there. So check that out. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, Phoenixes. I cannot wait to see your projects. I'm so glad that I am bringing something to you that you can use, that you're loving, and I love bringing it to you. So I will see you later in the group. We're gonna have a fantastic week. We're gonna have a fantastic week doing, uh, doing uh, wands next week, the week after. Can't wait to bring that to you live. So excited. So I will see you later. Love you all so much, and I will see you soon.